If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. The question includes this figure of the Van de Graaff generator, but it turns out the picture is probably not that helpful. What is helpful are the following two ideas. You should probably pause the video here and read these ideas a couple of times to yourself just to make sure that they make sense. But basically what's going on is that the excess amount of charge on the sphere is going to distribute itself uniformly over the surface. So if we imagine this spherical surface covered in positive charge, those positive charges are basically just going to spread apart from each other and sort of cover the entire surface of the sphere. And it turns out in that situation that the electric field as well as the electric potential that exist outside the sphere are going to be the same as if all of the charge were concentrated as a point charge at the center of the sphere. I admit that that was a bit of a mouthful, but what it means essentially is that we can treat this metal sphere as if it were a point charge. Now for a point charge, a positive point charge in this case, we know that the electric field produced by that point charge can be calculated using this equation here. We also know that the electric potential V produced by a point charge can be calculated using this equation, which is similar to the first equation. Now, because the two equations are so similar to each other, it turns out there's a little bit of an algebraic trick that we can use to solve this question. If we go over to the electric field equation and multiply both sides of it by R, we would see that on the right side, this R and an R in the denominator would cancel out. And so on the right side, we would be left with K times Q divided by R. But looking over here, we can see that K times Q divided by R is equivalent to V. So what that means is we can replace this entire expression right here with V, the electric potential. And so we would be left with the following equation that relates the electric potential produced by the sphere to its electric field and its radius. Now, this equation is sort of written backwards, so why don't we just flip it around for simplicity. And now all we need to do is plug in the known quantities. We were given the electric field value right here in the question, as well as the radius of the sphere. We do have to convert that radius into meters, so rather than using 18, we'll have to use 18 times 10 to the minus 2. And that way it would be converted into meters. We'll go ahead and plug in the two values for the radius in the electric field. And when we simplify that, we get approximately 5.4 times 10 to the power of 5. And since this is an electric potential, the unit would be volts. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.